Hi guys, today I'm going to read um, books and some of this one is for Christmas and comment down below if you put on if you already put up your Christmas tree so and it's called Butterbean Cafe and it's holiday treats and this is a video actually but it's a book and it's from Nickelodeon. Nickelodeon. Yeah, it's on Nickelodeon. Okay. What's the title of your story? Holiday Treats. Okay. And the whole, it's Butterbean's Cafe. Okay. Butterbean, Cricket, Dazzle, and Jasper. We're getting ready for a special holiday dinner. Every year they made a special treat. A, a sugar plum fairy cake. Wow, They always sliced a tea piece and left it out for sugar plum fairy. Just in case she came to visit. Miss Pear Tree entered Buttermead's Cafe. She was a new Pooh! New to Poolbrook. 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 Butterbean didn't want Mrs. Pear Tree to be along for the holidays, so she invited her to dinner. Cricket was super excited to celebrate the holidays with their new friends. Mm. Okay, this is the part that there's a bad guy. This is the bad guy's guy. Maybe if we make sugar plum fairy cake, everyone will come here instead to going to Butterbean's Cafe. Mrs. Marmalady, Marmal, Marmalady said. So this is the good girl. This is the bad girl right there. And these are the two helpers. One, two. The monkey helpers. Mrs. Marble Lady sent Brooks and sent Spork. Spork. Spork and Spatch to find to find out to find out how Butterbean made her sugar plum fairy cake. Oh. But Spruck and Spat took Butterbean's special cake and accidentally put it into the machine that turned into, turned into a marmalade. You can't see. U.S. Supreme Court Associate Justice Samuel Alito ordering Pennsylvania officials to respond to an election challenge. <laughs> Alito had previously yeah. ordered the state lawyers to respond to the lawsuit by Wednesday. That is one day after the safe harbor day, which would mean Congress... Butterbean didn't want Mrs. Mama Lady to be alone for the holidays either, so she invited her to dinner. Dinner. Mrs. Marble Lady felt bad that she ruined their cake. 
She was worried that the sugar plum fairy wouldn't visit. I think um I think um that the sugar plum fairy is sugar plum fairy um is um the aunt um um Mrs. Pear Pear the pear tree Mrs. Miss Pear Tree. Oh. Here's the pay. This is Cricket, this is Butterbean, and this is the bad guys. Oh, Mrs. Um, what does it say? Oh, she's called Mrs. Marmba Lady. Not this Mrs. Is Miss only. Miss Marmba Lady. She's right here. Miss Marmba Lady. So this is Cricket. This is um Butterbean. This is um Mrs. Marmba Lady. Miss. Me oh, I already read that. They drew that line. Mrs. Marble Lady pretend to be the sugar plum fairy, but she didn't fool Bottom Bean and her friends. This is Mom's Day. Apologize for winning their cake, Butter Bean. Mrs. Marble Lady to make a new butter. I'm very quick with them. I think it would have the same effect for most Americans if they knew they could depend on something like Medicare for themselves as well. Republicans plan to oppose the Sarah, Senator Tom Cotton tweets. Javier Becerra spent his career attacking pro life Americans and trying to force pregnancy. You're going to be surprised. Abortion. This cycle of Biden's the way presidential campaigns operate and rally and they're still sleeping. They all made a new Canadian classic smile for the real. Sugar Plum Fairy. Would she visit? She did! Mrs. Pantry was the Sugar Plum Fairy! I was right, guys! She was the Sugar Plum Fairy! See, that's Mrs. Pear Fairy. And she's, she is just a Sugar Plum Fairy! Uh, I guess it. Yeah. <laughs> the sugar plum fairy gave Butterbean a rare and magical sugar plum bean. A special bean caused the big cake to turn into a pretty little cakes. Now everyone can have their very own holiday treat. It was just like a sugar plum fairy always says, the holidays are better when you spend them together. Seven months later, and two vaccines are ready. Me. That's it. Me. And Pfizer is expected Thursday. That's it. And then, that's it. No, and then we're going to read another one. It's called the, the, the Three Little Pigs and the Big, Big, Big Red Dog. This is make believe. Seriously, big. Bigger than your house. Big. Big like your house. But this is just made believe. Hello, I'm Emily Elizabeth. And this is my... This is Clifford, my big red dog. Every night we cuddled, we cuddled up and my dad tells us a story. My dad loves making Clifford, Clifford, and me the stars of the story. Tonight we're reading The Three Little Pigs and the Big Bad Wolf. Here's the page. Look how big the red dog is.
Look how big the clipper is. And that is holding the three little pigs. Okay, this is my favorite part. Once upon a time, Clifford had his best friend, Emily Elizabeth. Move, move to a new village. They were, they were excited to meet their neighbors, the three little pigs. They had even baked a pie for each pig. Just as they were about to leave, Chris, Chris would have let out a horrible sneeze. Uh, uh, ah, Clifford sneeze, Clifford sneeze rattled the whole house. Clifford, Emily Elizabeth cried, cried, mm -hmm. not cried today. Cried, crying, crying. It's like cry day. Clifford. Clifford. Um, you're sick. You should stay home and rest. But Clifford wouldn't stay. He wanted to meet his new neighbor. You almost forget them. And this is when he says, Ah, Elizabeth, Emily, Elizabeth, and Clifford arrived to the first little pig's house. His house was made out of straw. That looks pretty. By the hair of my neck, my chinny chin chin. It's my new neighbors, said the first little pig. Just then, Clifford felt another sneeze coming on. He huffled and puffled until. And uh, Emily Elizabeth apologized. Then they helped the little pig out from under the nest. The little pig gave Clifford a, blit, a big blanket to use as a Yankee. Yankee. You should really go home and get some rest, he said. Clifford wouldn't go home. He had to meet his other two neighbors and he'll deliver pies. Deliver the pies. And he wanted to help fix the first little pig's house too. So Clifford, Emily Elizabeth, and Emily Elizabeth, and the first little pig walked to the next pig's house. This pig's house was made out of this. Whoa, that looks like a cabin. By the hair of my chinny chin chin. It's my new neighbor and my brother too, said the second little pig. Just then, Clifford felt a, a sneeze coming on. He huffled and puffled until... Oh, guys, let me go back to the other page. I didn't show you it. I already showed you that one. This one. Yeah, I forgot to show it to them.
I forgot to show you it, guys. And this is another page. Oh, don't forget this page. So many pages. Ah, you blew the stick house down! <laughs> you really, you, you should really cover out your snot when you sneeze. Your snot, your snot when you sneeze. The second little bit grounded. You really should cover your snot when you sneeze. The, the second little bit grounded. Clifford, your sneezes are getting sneezes are getting worse. Said Emily Elizabeth. Let's get you home. But Clifford refused. He wanted to meet his neighbor. Look how grumpy he is. <laughs> <laughs> so Clifford, Emily, and Elizabeth and the two little pigs walk to the next pig's house. His house was made out of bricks by the hair of chinny chin chin. It's my new neighbor and my brothers too. Tonight overseas, the American troops prepare to withdraw from the South. Come and read now. Come on. Okay. Come on. Come on. Come on. And talk to people who may not be surprised are almost universal <laughs> in agreement that it is time for the U.S. to win. Come on. The road toward Afghan Kabul is a glorious one. It's where modern Afghan... It's my new neighbors and my brothers too, said the third little pig. Just then Clifford felt another sneeze coming on. He tried to cover his nose, but it, it was no use. He sneezed, couldn't be stopped. He huffled and puffled. This Clifford, this was Clifford's biggest sneeze yet. Look at him, look at him. He's in the street. He's in the tree. He's in the tree. But the brick house didn't fall down. You got a nasty cold, said the third little pig. You better come inside and rest. The third little pig made a 
a pot of soup for Clifford. He also wrapped him with many blankets as he could find. While Clifford rest, Emily Elizabeth gave pig a pie after a while Clifford was feeling much better. Later, the third little pig grabs, gathers bricks and building supplies to help his brothers fix their houses. Clifford and Emily, oh, Emily Elizabeth help too. Just as they were almost finished, Clifford started to help and pop. Clifford barked it happily. He was feeling back to normal.